What's up guys? This is going to be a quick ramble, an actual quick one. This is going to be like a bit of a part two to Only Official Souls Matter, the kind of mindset one. Uh, this one's going to be more so about penalties at home, and by penalties the three I'm mainly talking about are not counting plus twos at home, um, whether it's some plus twos or all plus twos, it really doesn't matter, like any misalignment plus two that you're not counting at home. Also, over-inspecting constantly. I think over-inspecting is the least of your worries because there are ways to use over-inspection as a good practice method, but if you get in the habit of constantly using like 13 seconds of inspection for most of your solves, it's going to kind of leak into your competition results a bit. And the last one would be how you start and stop the timer. So like how close your hands are to the cube, how close your hands are to the space bar, things like that to be mindful of. So basically how this whole only official solves matter um, penalty addition thing applies to the whole mindset. Basically, if you're doing crappy timer starts at home and you're not counting certain penalties or all misalignment penalties for that matter, and you're constantly over inspecting, well, this is what's going to happen in comp. Because you're over inspecting constantly, when you hear the judge say eight seconds, you're not going to be ready to start because you tend to use 13 seconds because that's the amount of time where you feel comfortable with the solution or start you've found. So when the judge says 8 seconds, you'll get nervous. When the judge says 12, you'll probably freak out a bit and just put your hands on the timer immediately. So that's not good. There is value to practicing with over-inspection with over -inspection because it can be a good way to become better at planning your crosses or planning cross plus one, things of that nature, or even just optimizing your solutions a bit more. So over-inspection isn't the worst of the... It's, in my opinion, like the least of your worries out of the three, but it can bleed into your official solves for that reason. As for plus two penalties, well, obviously, if you're not counting the plus twos at home, then you're not really, quote unquote, penalizing yourself and, you know, giving yourself that mental note that, hey, you need to, you know, not turn this certain way that leads to like a slight misalignment. And what will happen in competition is you'll do the same things you do at home, only this time the judge will actually count it. So you're doing yourself really no favors there. And a lot of people will do that in like an average of 100, like they'll have a close plus 2, they're on track for a good average of 100 or a PB average of 100, and they're like, eh, let's not count this one. But what will happen is an official average where you only get 5 solves, you'll get that plus 2 and it'll damn near ruin your average, so don't do it. I reckon the plus 2 one is probably the worst of the 3, as a habit. And then the last one being how you start and stop the timer, basically... How you choose to start and stop the timer at home is really none of my concern. However, you should keep in mind if you're holding the cube and using a phone timer. So like, uh, I don't have a cube here. Let's pretend this water bottle from Anytime Fitness is your cube. And, I don't know, let's pretend... I don't know. The timer is like somewhere here. So your hand's on the timer and your other hand's like on the cube. You pick it up, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then you stop like a similar way. That's probably the worst way you could start and stop the timer. And what will happen is you're idea of what you average based on the actual numbers will be inflated because doing that on a stack mat you'll be in my experience with those sorts of phone timer starts and stops it usually eats up about half a second maybe a bit less if you're like really quick off the stack mat probably a bit more if you're a bit slower like someone like me um so yeah you just want to be mindful of that because the way you start and stop the timer at home and the times that leads to will give you potentially like a false sense of what you average so in competition Let's say like your PB average of 100 using crap starts at home is like 8 seconds, like 8.0. And in competition, you always get like 8.7s or 8.8s. Realistically, those are actually good times for you, but what's going to happen is you're going to get tilted because you think you average a low 8 when you don't, and then you're going to get a worse average. However, if you think you average 8.7 and you start getting 8.7s, you know, maybe you'll get nervous because you're on track for a good average, but you're not going to be like upset at yourself because you're getting bad times. So... In that regard, I think the way you start and stop the timer at home does matter for that reason. Uh, but it's not as big of a deal as the plus two one because, again, it could kind of work in reverse where you think an 8.6 is slow for you, so you kind of calm down a bit and just assume the average is over. But in reality, it is actually a good time for you, but you don't think that because your solves at home, you know, the numbers are faster, but the numbers are kind of lying a little bit. But it can technically work out. However, generally speaking, it doesn't. So... In my opinion, you are better off getting rid of those three habits unless you have a, unless you're mindful about the reason why you're doing it and it is actually benefiting you. But generally, they don't. So count your penalties at home. It'll help the mindset of only official souls matter, because 
If your unofficial solves don't matter, then why does it matter if you plus 2 in your PB average of 100? It doesn't. <laughs> so, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next ramble.